I think that ASCO 2023, there were uh, some other uh, trials uh, with CDK46 inhibitors and there were the, the results were quite interesting. And first of all, of course, I wanted to mention the results of Natalie uh, that were uh, presented uh, at ASCO. Uh, Natalie is a randomized phase three trial that tested the role of adjuvant ribociclib for three years at a dosage of 400 milligrams per day in combination with the standard endocrine therapy for uh, five years. And uh, uh, during uh, uh, ASCO, uh, the, Dr. Slamon presented uh, the primary analysis of, uh, of Natalie. So the primary endpoint was invasive disease-free survival. And actually, ribocyclib demonstrated to improve uh, IDFS in these patients. The hazard ratio was 0.75. We also observed an improvement in distant relapse-free survival, while the data on overall survival are still immature. I have to say that these results uh, are very promising and very interesting because uh, this study met uh, its primary endpoint. The ribocyclib is associated uh, with a significantly improved uh, with uh, IDFS. Uh, but we also have to take into account uh, that the median follow-up uh, is uh, 34 uh, months. So we also need to wait, uh, of course, a longer follow-up uh, to make sure that the curves uh, continue to separate and uh, that the longer follow-up confirms the results that uh, we observed. Then always talking about CDK46 inhibitors, we also saw the results uh, uh, from a sub-analysis of Monarchy that was presented by Dr. Hamilton and uh, she presented uh, the efficacy and safety data of Monarchy by age. And this is a particularly important uh, project because of course uh, we have more and more patients in our daily practice that are older than uh, 75 years old, 65 years old, and it's important to have data on this specific population. So what we observed from this sub-analysis of monarchy is that uh, um, the efficacy of uh, uh, adjuvant abemacyclib is uh, consistent regardless of age. So in all age groups uh, we can observe the efficacy of uh, abemacyclib. Uh, on the other hand, uh, patients older than 65 years old tend to have uh, a higher rate of treatment discontinuation or dose reduction uh, of abemacyclib, but still this Despite this dose reduction or treatment uh, uh, discontinuation, the efficacy is maintained. So these uh, are important data. So one important message that uh, derives from this meta from this uh, sub-analysis is that uh, older patients uh, should be monitored more frequently for to be able to make uh, those adjustments uh, in case of toxicity. But even if uh, we do these uh, those adjustments, uh, the efficacy of the treatment is uh, still maintained. And then uh, one other last trial that I would like to mention uh, uh, that involves the CDK46 inhibitors is uh, uh, the results uh, of a Penelope B presented by Dr. Turner. And these are the ctDNA analysis uh, from Penelope B. So basically, Dr. Turner presented this data of a circulating tumor DNA from patients enrolled in Penelope B. Just to give a bit of context, uh, Penelope B was a uh, trial testing uh, post-neoadjuvant palbocyclib for one year in patients with residual disease uh, at surgery after the completion of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So uh, what the Dr. Turner showed is that the ctDNA detection in these patients is strongly associated with the disease relapse and this added to the, the existing evidence that we have it's that the ctDNA can really predict the disease recurrence in early breast cancer. But also it raised a, a few interesting insights, for instance, in the sensitivity of the ctDNA detection. Because for instance, a response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy can reduce the detection rate of ctDNA in these patients. So I think that overall for this field of CD, CD4, CDK46 inhibitors in breast cancer, uh, there were very interesting data presented at the ASCO 2023, and I think really that this uh, can help us uh, to improve uh, the care of uh, our patients with uh, breast cancer.